Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 21st of February. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah meets Maldivian counterpart in New Delhi. Afghan security officials confirms week-long reduction in violence by Taliban starts Saturday. And Hindus across India celebrate Mahashivratri festival with religious fervor. And now for all the details. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Friday met his Maldivian counterpart Sheikh Imran Abdullah in capital New Delhi. This is Shah's first meeting with Abdullah, who is on a four-day visit to India beginning on Thursday. Both the ministers held talks of mutual interest aimed at strengthening bilateral ties. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah met his Maldivian counterpart Sheikh Imran Abdullah in capital New Delhi on Friday aimed at fostering bilateral ties. Both the leaders held talks of mutual interest. There have been several high-level engagements between the two countries in recent times. The meeting assumes significance as India and Maldives share ethnic, linguistic, cultural, religious and commercial links steeped into antiquity. India evacuated more than 600 individuals including seven Maldivians from China's Wuhan, the epicenter of deadly coronavirus. Maldivian President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli expressed gratitude to Prime Minister Narendra Modi for evacuation of its citizens. The Council of Presidential Candidates in Afghanistan has called for the final results of the election to be disregarded, blaming the Electoral Commission for neglecting its duties. Incumbent President Ashraf Ghani was declared winner in the bitterly contested polls earlier this week. The Council of Presidential Candidates in Afghanistan on Thursday calls for the final results of the presidential election to be disregarded. A number of presidential candidates, including Ahmed Wali Masood, Mohammad Shahab Hakimi, blamed the Electoral Commission for neglecting its duties, which, according to them, has led the country into a crisis. The final results of the presidential election were announced on Tuesday by the Independent Election Commission and incumbent President Ashraf Ghani was declared winner. The election was held on September 28, 2019. Many say it was rigged. Meanwhile, outgoing Afghan Chief Executive Abdullah Abdullah has complained to the European Union about its recognition of final election results. In a Twitter post that included a copy of his letter of complaint, Abdullah declared that the results announced on February 18 from the presidential vote were illegal and unacceptable to most Afghans. He alleged that official results showing him in second place behind Ghani were the result of systematic fraud and serious electoral irregularities that were carried out at the behest of a rival team. An Afghan official confirmed on Friday that Afghan international and Taliban forces will observe a seven-day period of reduction in violence in Afghanistan beginning at midnight. The agreement was reached during U.S.-Taliban talks in Qatar and could lead to a withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. Afghan international and Taliban forces will observe a seven-day period of reduction in violence in Afghanistan beginning at midnight. Javid Faisal, spokesperson for the Afghan National Security Council, said on Friday. The agreement was struck during protracted negotiations between U.S. and Taliban representatives that began in Qatar in 2018 and could lead to a withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. Senior Taliban leaders have, however, said that the period cannot be called a ceasefire, reports suggest. Officials privy to the talks had said last week that an agreement with the Taliban would be followed by negotiations on an intra-Afghan political settlement. The Taliban has previously refused to speak directly to the Kabul government, which they denounce as a U.S. puppet. 
Afghan forces will keep up normal military operations against other terrorist groups during the period and will also retaliate to the smallest violation of the understanding by the Taliban, Faisal said. Nepal's communication minister Gokul Baskota on Thursday resigned from his post after an audio tape of him bargaining for a commission over the procurement of a security printing press for the government got leaked. Nepal's Minister for Information, Communication and Technology, Gokul Baskota, on Thursday resigned from his post after an audio tape of him bargaining for a commission of security printing press got leaked. Taking to Twitter, Baskota said that he has tendered his resignation to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli on moral grounds after questions were raised against him. In the audio clip published online by a local news portal on Wednesday, Baskota can be heard bargaining for 70 crore Nepali rupees in bribe over the procurement of security printing press for the government. On Thursday, Parliament Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota also informed the House of Representatives about the minister's resignation. औपचारिक पत्र त आउने नै छ र मलाई अनौपचारिक रूपमा जानकारी भए अनुसार सम्बन्धित मन्त्रीले राजीनामा पनि दिइ सक्नु भएको छ र सरकारको ध्यान आकर्षण पनि भइसकेको छ Office of Nepal's president informed that after Baskota's resignation from the post, President Bidya Devi Bhandari has assigned the additional portfolio to Finance Minister Dr. Yubraj Khatiwara on Prime Minister Oli's recommendations. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has announced the country is withdrawing from a United Nations resolution investigating alleged war crimes in the island nation. PM Mahinda Rajapaksa was president when Sri Lankan troops defeated Tamil Tiger rebels in 2009, but rights groups accused the army of killing at least 40,000 civilians in the final months of the conflict. Sri Lankan Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has announced his government is withdrawing from a United Nations resolution investigating alleged wartime atrocities by Lankan troops in 2009. The Prime Minister in a statement has said the government would no longer abide by the 2015 resolution calling for accountability for alleged excesses carried out by Lankan forces and reparations for victims. The Resolution 30-1 on Promotion on Reconciliation in Sri Lanka was co-sponsored in 2015 by the then Lankan government. This comes days after the US imposed travel restrictions on Sri Lankan Army Chief Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva and his immediate family members over alleged gross violations of human rights during the final phase of the island nation civil war in 2009. Mahinda Rajapaksa was president when Sri Lankan troops defeated Tamil Tiger rebels in 2009. But rights groups accused the army of killing at least 40,000 civilians in the final months of the conflict. His brother, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, who is now the Lankan president, was defense secretary at that time. An annual motorsports event was recently held in Pakistan, which witnessed participation of scores of people from across the country. A popular attraction for fans off-road racing, the event began 12 years ago in a remote desert as a way to bring tourists to the region. Scores of people who share a love for motorsports in Pakistan annually gather at the sprawling Cholistan Desert to watch racers in their powerful four vehicles roar out onto the sandy track. This year, more than 130 cars participated in the 15th annual Desert Jeep Rally race, which despite its name is not exclusive to using only Jeep vehicles. The winner of the inaugural rally in 1994, Ronnie Patel, who is still a racer after 26 years, at the event said he is optimistic about the future of Jeep rallies in Pakistan as the sport has reached to international levels now. The future is very big, but we should manage it in the right way. If it is managed in the right way, it will be a very big game. It will come to the international level. हम जीप रैली के लिए यहाँ पे आए हैं दोस्तों के साथ भी आए हैं यहाँ बड़ा एंजॉय कर रहे हैं बहुत मजा आ रहा है बेदाश्त मजा आ रहा और हम तो ये हैरान हैं कि किस तरह ये गाड़ियाँ चलाई जाती हैं किस तरह जीप चलाया जाता है बड़ा मुश्किल काम है कटन मसला होता है बड़ा मुश्किल होता है मट्टी उड़ रही होती है आसमान पे और और लोगों का मुंह जो ना क्या चेहरा बिल्कुल धूल मट्टी से ढला होता है 
According to organizers, the annual Desert Jeep Rally is lined with several forts and even a palace, attracting around 500,000 domestic tourists. While there are wealthier enthusiasts willing to spend on vehicles for the race, a stock category featuring participation at a nominal rate for those who can only afford normal cars has been introduced to keep the race accessible for the masses. An annual handloom exhibition underway in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir is attracting scores of buyers. The two-week-long event aims to give exposure to weavers and sellers to showcase their products and skills. A two-week-long special handloom exhibition underway in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir is attracting scores of people. Kashmiri handloom items like pashmina and kani shawls and ferans are famous across the globe for their quality and fine embroidery. The exhibition is organized every year by India's Ministry of Textiles in association with the handloom department. It aims to give exposure to weavers and sellers associated with various handloom societies of the region to showcase their products and skills. Kashmiri Pashmina Kani Shal throughout India, throughout world famous. So, we have an opportunity to give our customers to come here, to come shopping here, to give discount rates on the pure handloom products. We have to have such exhibition in Kashmir because the viewers who are in the house get an exposure so that they can show their products, 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 their products. A paradise for nature lovers, Kashmir has 5,000-year-old rich art and culture which turned out numerous Sufi poets, authors and musicians. This heritage is reflected in Kashmiri clothes such as kaftans and firans which have continued to retain their charm and score over modern winter costumes due to their warmth and comfort to beat the chill. Devotees across India on Friday celebrated the Hindu festival of Mahashivratri, the night that Lord Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, married his consort Parvati. On this day, devotees throng temples and offer prayers. Devotees across India on Friday celebrated Hindu festival of Mahashivratri, the night that Lord Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction, married consort Parvati, daughter of Himalaya. Admirers of Shiva in northern Varanasi city were seen plunging in the holy Ganges river and performing rituals with adoration. Devotees also offered flowers, leaves, water and milk to Shivling, a phallus representation of Lord Shiva and chanted prayers in temples. On this day, devotees also celebrate the festival by fasting and offering special prayers in various temples. इसलिए इसको महाशिवरात्रि के दिन में के रूप में हम लोग मनाते हैं। महाशिवरात्रि इस डी मोस्ट ऑस्पिशियस फेस्टिवल ऑफ डेविटीज ऑफ हिंदू लॉर्ड शिवा। डेविटीज थ्रोंग टेंपल्स इन ह्यूज नंबर्स एंड पार्टिसिपेटेड इन रिचुअल्स परफॉर्म्ड बाय प्रिस्ट्स। डेविटीज इन थाउजेंड्स लाइन्ड अप टुगेदर in capital New Delhi, devotees were also seen celebrating the festival with gaiety and fervor. Baba ki blessing ke liye aaye, bahut bhi lagi hui hai, bahut manta hai yahan ki. Aur aaj ke din yehi hai ki Baba pe shivling ka, shivling pe jal chadaaye, aur logon ki mano kamne puri hoti hai. Devotees believe that whatever one wishes for and prays for with devotion on this day, that wish is fulfilled. They also mark the festivities by consuming drinks and sweets mixed with cannabis. Lord Shiva forms part of the trinity of gods along with Lord Brahma and Lord Vishnu in the Hindu mythology. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah meets Maldivian counterpart in New Delhi. Afghan security official confirms week-long reduction in violence by Taliban starts Saturday. And Hindus across India celebrate Mahashivratri festival with religious fervor. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night.